vent your spleen. Get it off your chest. Ooh, I haven't heard that in a while. It's time. Today's the day. Vent your spleen. Get it off your chest. Yeah. And that's just the start. So I looked up synonyms for the word disappointing. Saddening, disheartening, displeasing, cold, demoralizing, depressing, discouraging, disheartening, disconcerting, upsetting. There were like 40 of them. I just picked out a few. Yeah. And it's probably how a lot of Dodger fans feel today. They felt this way Saturday night. And I'm sure that feeling has not passed. Uh, Congratulations to the Padres. Congratulations. Truth be told, we do the show every day. Uh, We look at things and we try to to give you what we feel at the moment. We thought the Dodgers would win. Good for the Padres, but really the Padres are irrelevant. It's not really about the Padres, but they won and congratulations. Best of luck against the Phillies. But it's not about the Padres. And as we sit here today and look at what happened and think about the season, we have to remember this was not about the Padres. This is about the Dodgers. And the Dodgers did not play well. The Dodgers did not put it all together. And in a season where you won 111 games, most in franchise history, I think fifth most in baseball history, a magical year where your manager during spring training said, we're going to win the World Series. And by the way, what do you expect the guy to say? We're going to suck? No, we're going to win the World Series. Yes. That's why we're here. And a year where so many wonderful things happened, and in a year where they battled through so many injuries, they came up flat. They came up flat against good pitching. And ultimately, it doomed them. The highest paid lineup in Major League Baseball came up short. And there were some problems. And obviously, those problems were exposed. You know, keep your fingers crossed, rub a rabbit's foot, feel good, feel optimistic. When it was all said and done, they didn't have enough. And 111 wins is something you can never take away from anybody. That is an incredible season. And the players on that team will always remember that year. And they'll remember it with a smile. But right now, the only thing that matters is that after a season like that, Rodney, unceremoniously knocked out in the division round. Bitterly disappointing. Yeah, I I disagree. I don't think they remember it with a smile at all. I, I think they remember it as a season that, that uh, got away from us, that we let one go, that we had a chance to win it and we didn't perform to our abilities. It's the season where the Patriots go 16-0. and and yet couldn't finish the deal because the Giants beat them in the Super Bowl. It's the year where the Warriors won more games than anybody but couldn't finish the deal and and lost to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Those are the things you take away from seasons like that if you don't close the deal out. So, yes, 111 games is great, and we sat on the show and we said, yes, congratulations, and, and congratulations were in order at that particular time and for the season. It is no small feat, and they will be – Talking about the best seasons of ever, you know, of all time, and certainly this past year will go uh, on the ranks as the the most wins ever by uh, the the a Dodger team in franchise history, and 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 that record is there. But if you don't close the deal, then it it, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And these guys, trust me, have a bad taste in their mouth. And one of the hardest things as an athlete, when you're playing and you have a good season. And things are going well for you, and you get to the to the postseason, and you don't perform well. That is a hard thing to swallow, because you can live with going out and getting beat by another team when you go out and you play your best. You gave it everything you have. Not saying they didn't, because they did, but you play up to your ability. You do all the things, and you just happen to get beat by a better team on that day. But in this case. Up and down this Dodger lineup, I don't think they any one of them can look at themselves and say they were at their best. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Like I said, you can you can live with it. Hey, we gave it everything we had. We played our hearts out. We played great baseball. We just got beat. Well, the Dodgers didn't play great baseball, and they got beat. And I can't sit there and congratulations, yes, to the Padres because they – 
They felt it. They they felt it, I believe, in game two when they won here at Dodger Stadium that we could go home and close this thing out. They smelled blood in the water, and they played like it. And so you got to congratulate them. But at the same time, I don't believe they're a better team. I don't believe they were the better team. I believe they played better, but I think more the story for me in this series is that the Dodgers didn't play well at all. Not that they got beat by a better team. They didn't play well at all. And it'd be different if the Padres were just extremely hot. Now, they had some timely hitting. Don't get me wrong. They had timely hitting, which is great. But they weren't hot. The Phillies are hot. Yeah. Right? The Phillies, like Atlanta Braves got to go, man, we ran into a buzzsaw. Because everyone on the Phillies was hitting. They were dominating. Bryce Harper was on fire. Um, Hoskins on fire. I mean, the whole team was hitting. And so you could go, I don't know if anybody's beating the Phillies in that series. I don't care who you put up there. The Phillies were beating anybody in front of them. And Braves just got beat by a team that was just red hot. I can't say that about the Padres. I don't think they were red hot. The Dodgers just played bad. And at the end of the day, that's hard. When you play bad in the biggest of moments, it's a hard one to take. Because they know to a man that they're better than that. 111 wins. So the expectations were very high. Everybody had those expectations. The players did as well. Certainly everybody that was a Dodger fan in this city did. And then they come up short. The Dodgers played very well during the regular season. Very well. But did they? Well, here's the thing. I've said this. You heard me say it, and we can go back. I've said it also. 11 wins is great. But they didn't feel like it was a dominant 111 wins. It felt like they ran through some teams and, you know, chalked up a bunch of wins. But I didn't feel like they, at really one long stretch of the season or extended stretch of the season, that they put it all together and that they were rolling. You know, maybe in late August and early September for a little bit, for a little stretch, but not for the bulk of the season where we go, oh, my God. It's murderer's role like we thought it was going to be on paper. I don't. I didn't feel like they had an extended stretch like that where they lived up to what the paper said of this being an incredible lineup. Now, on paper, it is an incredible lineup, but I don't think they performed like it was an incredible lineup like we thought it was going to be. And, yes, they won 111 games, but to me, it was a business-like 111 games, not a dominant win 111 games, and nobody's going to beat us. Uh, the Dodgers beat up on bad pitching. They had the biggest run differential in Major League Baseball. They just beat up bad pitching. A good pitching is a different story for everybody. When you face a good pitcher, it's very different than facing mm-hmm. the fourth starter from Colorado. But what we have seen now in the postseason is that when they do run into good pitching, they're in trouble. And we've seen it now for a number of years. This is not, we, you know, we've seen this movie. We always hope for a different ending. But we've seen the movie. When they run into dominant pitching, they're in trouble. Same thing happened this go-round. But you could say that for, for anybody, though. Not the Phillies. <laughs> not the Phillies yeah. this year. That's true. That's true. No. The Phillies are hot. Uh, okay, hot. but Rodney, here's the point. When you have it's the not, highest payroll in baseball. Doesn't matter. And you have, you have lined your lineup. And with man. guys that can hit and have hit and have hit. There are an expectation now that when it's crunch time, you're really going to hit. Mookie didn't have a great series. Yeah, a terrible series. Put it that way. Sugarcoat it. He had a terrible series. I think he had two hits. Um, Yeah, I think he had two hits. And, and, and I know everybody wants to fixate, oh, they make a lot of money and they got the highest. But it has nothing to do when the game starts. It has nothing to do with that. You know, guys on the other side are getting paid too. Maybe not, maybe ten million, fifteen million dollars less, but they're getting paid too. They're not, they're not some bum off the streets now. They're getting paid too, and the and and you still have to go play. It doesn't matter how much money you're getting paid. Doesn't matter at all when the game starts. Nobody cares. They other opposing, opposing team doesn't care. They're not pitching to you. Oh, Mookie makes three hundred sixty-five million dollars. Ooh, I'm scared of him. No, not at all. You can set expectations all you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even enter anybody's mind 
that that plays the game of how much somebody on the other side is making. Yeah, but I think it does enter into the fans' mind where they go, okay, Mookie That's is fine. the star, but Mookie's yeah. the star. Mookie's got to perform. That's why he makes that money because the belief is he's going to perform. He had a bad series. Do you think because he's great, he should perform, not because how much money he makes. Yeah, but he he gets paid the money because so, he's great. Do you think I don't know if Asse said this on Dodger Talk or with you guys last week that Mookie puts pressure on himself and he's pressing and that's why he's not performing. He didn't tell us that. He said it on Dodger Talk. Maybe it was on Dodger yeah. Talk then, but Vasse sure. definitely brought it up last week. And that I'm sure he does. Mookie is a very internal guy that that does believe a lot of him himself and. And I'm sure uh, in these moments, he feels, especially leading off, and he's heard it millions of times that the Dodgers go as Mookie goes. The Dodgers go as Mookie goes. And if Mookie's hot, the Dodgers are hot. So I'm sure that's embedded in his brain and in his mind that I got to be good. And sometimes, yes, I think it gets into his head that I got to be great. I got to be perfect. I got to do this. I got to do that. Instead of just playing, going out and playing yeah. and, being, and being Mookie that we know you can be. Trey, he had a terrible series. Trey Turner hit the ball, which is a bit unusual because normally in the postseason he doesn't. He did here. But he did make a mistake in game two that you could say cost him the game. Okay. Freddie Freeman was, eh. eh he was okay. He wasn't great. He was Freddie he was pretty Freeman. good. He was, was the best of all like of them. He was like 330. Yeah, he was yeah, the best of all of them. Freddie was fine. He was, yeah, he he was, was not a problem at all. He was the better of all three of them. He was of all, you know, you, they talk about top three. I, think, I look at it as top four. Freddie Freeman. I mean, yeah, he he was better than all of them. I think he was he hit like three fifty seven or something like that with five fourteen with a homer, three doubles, three RB. He was good. He was three for three in the closeout he game. Was what more great did you ask for him? Of all of those guys, he was the one that was consistent. Now the, the issue is Will Smith runners in scoring position. Oh, that yeah. Well, and that brings you up know, Will Smith. So that's that's the issue when you come with with Freddie and Will Smith and Muncie and Turner who. Usually comes up with guys on base. Those guys didn't come through. Those guys didn't come through. And Freddie had, you know, he did have a great series. You know, the home run and the doubles scored runs. But the other guys didn't didn't, didn't come through when they had runners in scoring position. They didn't hit. Okay, so we got that. Now the cries, the chance, immediately on social media. I ran into people Sunday and said it immediately. Well, now Dave Roberts has got to go. Yeah. It's Dave Roberts. He's got to go. Uh, let's talk about what Dave Roberts did in the series. Let's just think about it here for a second and, and make a determination. First, Dave Roberts, again, isn't pitching or hitting for anyone. And we also know that it is a collaborative effort when they put that that lineup together. And the playoff roster as well. I mean, Joey Gallo was on the playoff roster, I, I guess, just to sit there. He didn't have one at bat. Yeah. Not one at bat. Uh, they pitch uh, at Bellinger. They could have pinch hit Joey Gallo because Bellinger. Was that a guarantee that Gallo was going to hit? No, but I'll okay. tell you what. I'll tell you a guarantee that Bellinger wasn't. <laughs> He's looked awful. His at-bats yeah. were terrible. He looked they awful. Were. And they yes, got they him were. out on the same pitch every single at-bat. Yeah, High fastball. That's all anybody ever did, and he kept on And everybody in the ballpark knows it. Yep. And, yep. and we'll talk more about what the future should be later. Uh, so you just talk about decisions and how things could have gone differently. We acknowledge that that Dave doesn't hit for everybody. Yeah. And he's not out there pitching. Okay. And, and they cried about putting in, uh, pinch hitting Art's Austin Barnes. What did Austin Barnes do? Drove it to the track. Exactly. No, but Austin Barnes got hits in the series. Well, yeah. Timely hits in the series, too. Nobody could bring him in. He got on base. Let's talk about now the pitching decisions. Okay, there's a couple of ways you can look at it when you look at the series. Game three, they went with Gonsolin and then Heaney. You could make the argument because they wanted to save Tyler Anderson just in case the Dodgers lost game three. By the way, uh, Gonsolin and Heaney and the bullpen did a pretty good job that day. <laughs> pretty good job. What they give up? Two runs? Two runs. Yeah, they gave up two runs. You got to be able to score two runs. Dodgers scored one. That's could, a two to one game? Yeah. 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 Could have said, all right, you know what? We're just going to go for it. Put Anderson here. Go for it right now. If we win, we've taken back control of the series. You can make that argument, but if you look at what the pitchers did in that game, only gave up two runs. Now let's go to Tyler Anderson pitching, and he did a good job. So that's one game. So they gave up they, the pitchers pitching staff gave up two runs. Yeah. Are we considering that a job well done by the pitching staff? A great job. Okay. Great job. Yeah, they couldn't hit. Right. All right. Okay. 
So now let's go to Saturday's game. Tyler Anderson is cruising along. Looks good. Has him off balance. Uh, having a really good game. Fifth inning. Decision was made. I think he had 86 pitches at that point. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's it for you. That's it. This is an elimination game. We understand what the book says. The decision was made. At that point, you're out. And they went to the bullpen, which, again, had been very good all year. You might make the argument at that point, hey, this is it. If this guy's got it going, we're going to let him keep going. Now, if he gives up a walk or a hit, fine. We've got the hook ready. But if he continues to pitch the way he did, we're going to leave him in the game. They didn't leave him in the game. Later, as we process and move forward, and things are now starting to get dicey and a little scary, the use of the bullpen in that situation. So it has been announced that there is no closer. It will be closer by committee. I think it's safe to say there was a situation, and Evan Phillips is the guy, Rodney, and you said it mm-hmm. really early in the year. Yeah. Before he became the guy, mm-hmm. you said he was the guy. Yeah, I like this stuff. I like his ability to get outs, to get punch outs, too. Right. To he stop needed, the bleeding. He needed to be in the game, but they were saving him to close. But this is a committee situation. You are in an elimination game. There is no tomorrow now. You got to play pitch by pitch by pitch. Get out of one problem and hopefully you don't have another. Evan Phillips wasn't in the game when he needed to be in the game. Uh, Canely went in. They like Canely. Okay, well, you know what happened there. Next up was Almonte, and you know what happened there. As Almonte started to struggle, the By the way, Almonte was fantastic the day before. Exactly. Okay. Not arguing that. Yeah. I'm not arguing. I'm saying we're looking at that one game. Yeah. As Almonte starts to get into trouble, you think you're going to go to Vessia. Now, I don't know if there was a miscommunication. I'm not really sure. But all of a sudden, Vessia is up. Almonte pitches one pitch, and Dave Roberts takes him out. After the game, the feeling was we wanted him to throw to first base to give Vessia more time to warm up, Mm -hmm. but he missed the sign. But if he had thrown to first base, that might have given Vessia another seven seconds to get ready. So Vessia was coming into the game. Maybe they just got him up late. But he came in, another guy that we love, and you saw what happened, and you saw the result. A lot of finger pointing after that game, Rodney, at Dave Roberts, his use of the pitching staff and of the bullpen. Yeah, uh, and and I get it. People want to play Monday morning quarterback and after the fact, but let's, let's look at the facts, right? Juan Soto was the hitter coming up in that sixth inning, right? This is Juan Soto's third time at the plate. So you're talking about now Tyler Anderson. Yeah, Tyler Anderson. Going yep. back to Tyler yep. Anderson yep. when they pulled him out. Everybody said, holy men, men, men. And that's been the that's been the MO. Third time around the order. Do you want it? We sat here on this show. Do you want to face third time in an order? Uh, I don't know. You got you can't let him face third, especially with that guy coming up. Right? You don't want that guy to give them any kind of momentum. He's leading off. What do you do? And I get it. Lefty on lefty, why not leave him in? Change it up. Either way, I'm good with that because it's the MO, and that's how they pitched and, and dealt with it all season long. I don't care if the guy's dealing. He goes in there, he stays in, and gives up a home run to Juan Soto. Everybody's saying, oh, why'd you leave him in? It's third time around the order, third time around. And by the way, we're talking about the best bullpen in baseball. Not in National League. In baseball. And we're talking about Canley, who had only given up two hits since September. So it wasn't like they were going to a scrub. And in that given situation, I understand. Now, I uh, I do, I, I like to go more with the eye test. And I've said this over and over over the years. 
If a guy is cruising, let him cruise. Let him go a little bit. But that's how they've won. That's how they've done it in the past. And it's worked one way, and it's not worked. And they've tried to switch it up, and it's not worked. There was no right answer. My point is, there was no right or wrong answer in that particular situation because you do have the best bullpen in baseball coming out to save you in that situation, which you were hoping to get to the sixth inning, and they did. Here's the question. You talk about using the eye test. This is it. It's the elimination game. A game the Dodgers did not think they would face. A situation they did not believe they would be in. This is it. And when it's it, don't you have to look at things a little differently? Don't you have to use the eye test a little more? Don't you ha- don't shouldn't you just not go by the book? Because it's over if you get beat. It's over. You've got a guy that's just moving along. And you've got a guy at the plate that is a is on the heels or on the cusp of really breaking out, a guy that can damage you in one swing. Do you want to see him that third time around? Do you want to see him that third time around that can hit the ball out of the ballpark and then all of a sudden now they've got the momentum because you left the guy in to face him the third time. He could have also struck out though too, Rodney. He could have. He could yeah. have. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm not I'm okay with either either way. Like I'm not I wouldn't have crushed him if he pitched to Juan Soto and Juan Soto hits a home run. I'd be like, okay, but the guy was dealing. Right? The guy was dealing. I'm, I'm my point is that's not that didn't lose the game. That didn't lose the game because either way he went, based on the history and based on the way their bullpen was performing all season long. It was the correct move. The, also, the correct move could have been to leave him in. And if Juan Soto hits the home run, hey, Tyler Anderson was dealing. I went with my eye test, and, and we're going to have to live with that. I feel like he, Dave Roberts will be receiving less criticism if he did that. If you left him in and Soto went deep. This is a, this is a soft tosser that threw 86 pitches who gave up two hits the entire game. It's not like his arm was tired. He even said after the game, and he's going to say this. I could have pitched five more innings, whatever. Of course. Uh, but I don't know because he's been. Dave's got killed in the past by leaving guys in too long. I feel like the only people he's left in too long have been Kershaw, and he's been killed for that. And he's had postseason issues in the past. I mean, for in a situation like this, like to Fred's point, the guy's rolling. Leave him in. If he hits a guy or something, then you start evaluating. But to just yank him simply because they did this to Blake Snell. This is the reason why the Dodgers won in 2020. It was a third time through the order. Blake Snell was dealing, and they took him out, and the Dodgers couldn't do anything the entire night until Snell left the game. And by the way, the Padres left all their starters in to at least begin going through the third time through the order, including Blake Snell and Joe Musgrove. Got himself into some trouble, but got out of it. At least give the guys opportunity to work themselves through it before just pulling, the, yanking them out simply because it's the third time through. Because that would be the only reason why you take him out, because he wasn't struggling at all. I, I just I disagree, though. I think if, if Soto hits a home run, they're all over him. I don't know Dave if that's Roberts. the case. I will Dave say, Roberts. you said it was Monday morning quarterbacking. There were people for sure at the time that said, why are you taking him out? So there were people Agreed. in the moment. I, I, I'm sure there were. I'm sure there were. And, and there are people, same people who are saying, I get it, third time around, Soto's up, you need to change the pace. You need to change the pace. People I was were saying, oh, yeah, okay, I know he's not going to leave him in the face, Soto. So right. I, I, I get it both ways. What I'm saying is I get it both ways, and I'm, I'm – I'm good with either decision of how it went down. All right, let me give you two other things here before we open the phone lines. Uh, First, a finger pointed at Dave Roberts. Then a finger pointed at Andrew Friedman. Mm -hmm. Look at what the Padres did during the trade deadline. And look at what the Dodgers did this year during the trade deadline. Okay. Now, also, keep in mind, San Diego got Josh Hader, who was horrific, and suddenly exactly. regained form. Exactly. And was horrific for them. Horrific yeah. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. Padres, yeah. They, they took him yeah. out of closing. Yeah. All right, yeah. then he found it again. All right. Yeah. So the Padres made these moves. The Dodgers did nothing at the trade deadline. Okay. This year. Yeah. This year. This year. If you look at the history of Andrew Friedman at the trade deadline, he he's not been moves. afraid to pull the trigger. Absolutely. I mean, you think about it. You Darvish, Manny Machado, Max Scherzer, Trey Turner. Trey Turner. 
Um, uh, there's been other guys. So it's it's not like he they haven't pulled the trigger this year. And by the way, the guys that they got, Padres, they weren't the one. They weren't the one that beat us, right? Juan Soto didn't. He he wasn't Juan Soto of the Washington Nationals, right? He wasn't knocking a cover off the ball. Josh Bell was just okay, you know. And he mentioned Hater. Hater didn't find it until late in the season, to the, basically this series. So it wasn't like they went out and traded and got Soto, and Soto just went off and hit 700 and hit five home runs and went crazy, and Bell went nuts because they got those guys in. No, it was Machado. It was Cronenworth. It was it was your boy Grisham, Grisham. Who, went, who went nuts, guys that they had. So it wasn't necessarily the guys that they brought in at the trade deadline. And by the way, like you said, the Dodgers have gone all in at the trade deadline and getting some guys. Now, people would question, you know, go all in on Verlander as opposed to Darvish at the time, I remember. But nonetheless, they went in and got people at the trade deadline. So they didn't do it this year. And again, again, it goes back to it's easy to point fingers and say, oh, it worked this time and it didn't work. How come you didn't do anything at the trade deadline? Well, that's not their history. It's not like they always do this. Right, because he has been aggressive at the trade deadline. All right, now this: if you look at since Andrew Friedman's been here, Dodgers have won the division title all but one year. They're good. They're built for sustained success. That's the model they use, and it works. It's not translated though, except one time to the postseason, and people's expectations here are very high given yes. the way they performed during the regular season. It's not 100%. translated. It did once. Once. Is this team, Rodney, built for success in the regular season? And if that's the case, what happens when you get to the playoffs? Well, it's the playoffs. That's what happens. It's the playoffs, and... It's the teams that are playing well going into the playoffs. It's the team that are healthy going into the playoffs. You know, you mentioned the guarantee at the beginning of the season. He guaranteed that when he had Walker Bueller. He guaranteed that when he had Dustin May, right? Didn't have any of those guys. Had Dustin May coming off injury, not not really usable. Um, no Walker Bueller. So it is about health. It is about what team is kind of got that thing rolling, got that got that little momentum to them. And if you remember, the Dodgers kind of cruised a little bit at the end of the season. They didn't look sharp. They didn't look sharp. In that Colorado series, they didn't look sharp. No. Um, got beat, you know, a few times in that series as well. Didn't look good at all. And so they weren't playing the best baseball at that time. And I'll say this too. Talking about the postseason, there hasn't been – a back-to-back winner of the World Series since the Yankees did it in the, in the late 90s, I believe, early 2000s. So you consider it all you want and say, okay, they're built for the postseason. Well, tell me who's built for the postseason. You don't know because we've had a different winner every single year. You know what I mean? So Atlanta Braves, they're built for the postseason, aren't they? They have a great regular season. The Mets had a great regular season. They ran up against a better team that was playing better than them at that particular time. So there's no guarantee, Just again, just because you win 111 games, just because you, you've got a great team and a great roster on paper and all those things, the playoffs, it's anybody's ball game. And it's, and it's luck has something to do with it. And you have to be playing well at the right time. And if you're not playing well, you're going to get bounced like the Dodgers have. Okay, Dodger fans, how do you feel? How do you feel on this Monday? 866-987-2570. Any way you want to shape it or spin it, it was exceptionally disappointing. They feel badly, and they're the ones playing. You feel badly because you've invested all of your emotional equity into it. Yeah, do you expect more? Are you being realistic? We're surprised. I mean, we were surprised sitting here. We were surprised. We were surprised when Trey Turner kicked that ground ball and it cost him game two. I wasn't surprised. I was. To be honest with you. you. You felt like in your heart, deep down, like, oh, this team is definitely going to go win the World Series. I kind of did. 
You did. I kind of did. You were that confident. Yeah. Yeah, see, I wasn't. I wasn't. I, I felt they had a really good team, but I feel like they were playing the best baseball. No. I agree I with didn't. that. I agree yeah. 100% with that. Yeah. For whatever reason, I thought, okay, let's turn on the switch. We're back. Yeah. And they never flipped the switch back. 866-987-2570. All right, this is your chance. Let it out. Let's all go through it together. Bro, yo, it's Cruz, J. Cruz, Cruz Show, Real 92.3. Shout out to my guys, Fred Rogan and Rodney Pete. Those are my guys, my guys. Hey! That's right, shout out. It is Monday. Man! Oh, man, oh, Monday. I can't remember having a bad feeling as I have on this Monday for L.A. and L.A. sports. Yeah. Well, the Rams won, though. We'll get into that. Yeah. Eric Dickerson will be here at 1 o'clock. Yeah. 